It's the last day of the 11th Heidelberg Laureate Forum and we're spending the day at the headquarters of the global software company SAP. In this vlog we focus on inclusion. We talk to Laureate Raj Reddy about how artificial intelligence can help bridge the literacy gap and we talk to Kumba Saar about her work promoting mathematics and computer science in Senegal. We also talk to Laureate Yal Kalai about women in mathematics and computer science. And Yal tells us about her remarkable work in cryptography and in proof. And of course tonight we'll head up to Heidelberg Castle to celebrate. Bis später! I'm here with Yal Kalai who won an ACM prize in computing in 2022. Yeah, this morning you told us many remarkable things in your talk. You're a cryptographer and you were telling us about these uses of cryptography outside encryption, such as helping make proofs much shorter. So what is it about cryptography that makes it so powerful? Yeah, so cryptography is very, very powerful. And as you said, it's much broader than just securing communication. Uh, actually, any place where there is a place for adversarial behavior, there is place for cryptography. And the way that cryptography usually kind of uh, disenables this adversarial behavior is by introducing some hard assumptions. Okay, so in other words, they assume that the adversary is computationally bounded. So we're not dealing with all powerful adversaries because in the real world, the adversary runs in some finite time. May it be a hundred years, a thousand years, but it's finite. And so we can assume that he cannot break some really hard problem, such as factoring. And that allows us, the fact that he cannot break factoring allows us to secure scheme. We can somehow embed this assumption in our schemes and secure them. So for example, in my research, what we do, we show how to take a long proof and convert it to a short one. This does not seem to require cryptography at all. However, the way we, we put cryptography in there is we now say we want to protect ourselves against an adversary that tries to generate a succinct proof for a false statement. And what we show is the only way you can do that is by breaking our underlying crypt cryptographic assumption. One of the things that's great about the HLF is that half of the young researchers here are women every year, um, but we still have very few female laureates. You were part of a lunch table discussing science, uh, women in science. Can you tell us any insights that came out of that discussion today? Yeah, so indeed it's really actually remarkable and so nice to see so many young female researchers. And by the way, not only female, it's really a great representation of various minorities that are very rare I see in my academic community. Speaking of what came up in the table, well, among many things, one of the things is the lack of female representation or other minority representation in when you, you know, when you go up the kind of in, re in uh, faculty positions or, and uh, I think we, w I think as a community we are trying, but we should continue and really make an effort uh, to show our young female researchers or, all, or other minority researchers that they are welcome, not by just saying that they're welcome, but really having as much participation of the female or other minority that are, already exists in our community and really trying to, to feel, make them feel welcome in any way we can, support them in any way we can. I'm here with Kumba Sa, who is one of the panelists talking about science communication on Friday. Kumba, you founded Tiranga Math, which promotes mathematics and computer science in Senegal. Could you tell us about one of the most impactful activities of Tiranga Math? Yes, uh, in Tiranga Math, we uh, do a lot of activities, and uh, one of the most impactful activities in Terangamat is uh, the training for uh, young uh, people to participate in uh, International Math Olympiad because uh, Senegalese team never participate in uh, this uh, competition, and uh, we would like uh, to be part of the first team that will bring us a, a medal from this uh, prestigious competition. 
Now, you started out as a pure mathematician and then you made the move into industry working on cloud computing and on generative AI. How is working as a researcher in industry different from working as a researcher in academia? That's uh, very different <laughs> because uh, I was in uh, pure mathematics. I did my PhD in Galois theory and um, I, I think that it is not the same skills uh, um, in academia and in industry. For example, in academia, uh, we need to be rigorous and maybe to take our time to think about what we would like to do. And maybe the difference uh, resides in the fact that uh, we don't have enough, enough time in industry. We have to be pragmatic, we have to be efficient, and uh, we have uh, also to, we, we are very goal-oriented. You're just about to do the camera training session with Tom and Ali. Why did you decide to do this? Actually, I have been interested in um, camera or broadcasting systems. That's why I was a kind of member of um, broadcasting systems at my university. So, uh, and then I found that there is a workshop for this current testing. So I was wondering if I can learn like angles about the camera or something like the appearance, good appearance for the cameras. Oh, it was intimidating when I first sat down because there was a mic in my face and the big lights. Yeah, but it was really good. And how do you think you'll use this going forward? Um, I'm, I really love to be online. I'm very social media online. <laughs> so I feel like maybe I need to communicate signs to students, for example. So I'll use the tips that he gave in communicating signs. Yeah. Tell us about the logo. Yeah, so like everyone knows, uh, our logo is different every year and it represents our young researchers. So in the center we see the distribution of genders, then we have the uh, different disciplines and also the different stages of their career, and finally of course uh, all the different countries that our young researchers are from. But how many young researchers are there? Well, there's 200, but we also have a bunch of other statistics that we don't have space for, so... How many laureates? There are 25 laureates at this year's HLF. How many alumni? 20. How many team members? 15. How many musicians? 40. How many support staff? 164. How many HLF t-shirts? 500. What's the average number of hours of sleep we've had? Four and a half. <laughs> How many coffees drunk throughout the week? About 3,500. How many calories have been burnt dancing? 180,000. And how many HLF romances? Ooh, well. Hmm. Guess we don't know. I'm here with Raj Reddy, who won the ACM AM Turing Award in 1994. Raj, you gave one of the Spark talks this morning about the promise and perils of artificial intelligence. One of the promises was that artificial intelligence could help with the literacy divide. What kinds of things might AI do to help with that? Basically, AI is, as I said, enhancing the mental capabilities of human beings. Here is a person who cannot read or write, so AI can read for him or write for him. And, and, uh, and that is the role. And so in this particular case, if there are new stories, and I want to know about you know, what is happening in the world today, so you might actually say, here are the headlines, and then I say, I want to hear about this. That means there is a speech recognition dialogue going on, 
and then you read the story. And I, and I should be able to barge in and say, stop there. I didn't understand that sentence. Can you explain it further? That's where chat GPT comes in, right? And so those, those are the kinds of things I think uh, will become possible. You've been to many Heidelberg Laureate forums over the years. What, what do you, as a laureate, get out of attending? I, you know, basically, I enjoy listening to my colleagues uh, because uh, I respect all of them and uh, they're all very highly accomplished. And I want to know what the hell they've been doing recently. <laughs> What are you going to take away from the HNF? All of the amazing connections I've made with the other young researchers and the laureates. I very fortunately get to take away a massively expanded network of all the young researchers that I've been able to meet here and the laureates as well. Uh, meeting uh, Prof Sullivan I think was really life changing. Um, he's working on some geometrical aspects and I also work in geometrical aspects but with uh, gravity. So gravity and geometry married together. The interactions, meeting the laureates, it was one of a lifetime experience for me. All of these great people that I met, the memories, uh, Heidelberg gave me a lot of memories, uh, the nature and all of that, so yeah. It's a bittersweet moment for all of us at the 11th Heidelberg Laureate Forum. It's the last day, sadly, but we get to celebrate at the beautiful Heidelberg Castle. Even though we're from different backgrounds, different stages of our careers, different research areas, even from different countries all around the world. We connected over the maths and the computer science, over the lunches, the coffee breaks, the dinners, and all the other activities that make the HLF so special. Thanks for a great week and see you next year. Bye bye. Um, Assalamu and shufkum for the amal jai. Bye bye until next time. Thank you. Goodbye, HLF. Hamba kashle. <laughs>